Hello and welcome once again to the Beat LA podcast. My name is Matt Ferrucci. I am a writer, director in Los Angeles, and I am joined, as always, by a man who has just suspended his campaign for president, Mr. Paul Rule. Paul, how are you? Uh, hey, Matt. Great to see you in this new year. Yes, I decided that I needed to focus on my personal life and my personal endeavors, mostly the Beat LA podcast. There's not enough time to run the country and be on this podcast, as we've learned. Well, recording this, folks, on, on Tuesday, January 16th, and last night was the Iowa caucuses. Not that we're going to get political at all, but do you follow that stuff like sports, Paul? Do you get into like the numbers on MSNBC? I used to until things got so nutty in our divided world. I think I talked about this, man. I worked in Washington, D.C. I thought I was going to be a politician. What did that track look like? Was it Senator... Paul Rule was a congressman. What, what, where were we thinking? I realized just like in America, if you want to call yourself sir, you don't have to be knighted. I think you can call yourself senator even without being a senator. So I just kind of took that on and put it on my business card. It was a lot easier that way. Hey, happy new year, Paul. I mean, uh, it's it's a 2024. Did you, did you have a good new year's? Do you have any new year's resolutions? I know you like to do a dry January in the past. Are we Are we trying to do this once again? Yes, I am doing what I read about something called damp January. And that oh. seemed to be better for me. And then, of course, damp January is what you make of it. So what I've decided is I'm not drinking during the week. Oh, that sound, that's such a caveat. That's such a – I don't like that. Because, you know, in the past, Paul, what I do enjoy about you is you go for it. And then you spend January as a time to reflect. Because December for you, I think, is your most – heavily drinking month. I'm not calling you an alcoholic here. I kind of respect your ability to drink like some guy from the 50s and, and still live a very productive life. But you were out every night for, for Christmas parties. Yeah. So I'm not drinking during the week. Also, last year, I got COVID for the last two weeks of the year. So I missed my holidays last year. So okay. I always believe in, in drinking for lost time. But Look, four days a week with no cocktail. I was at two events last week where they were serving free alcohol. I think that showed great strength. Open bar, baby. Hey, pal, what can I do you for? Free drinks, what do you have? Open bar is the best. So, okay, so uh, no, no. By the way, my platform when I was running for president was, was, was open bar. And I think that we should be like Oktoberfest where people wear dirndls and lederhosen like every Friday. Hey, so you don't have a New Year's resolution? I I do. I do. I do. It's to spread the word of the Beat LA podcast. Uh, my other New Year's resolution is finally remodeling my kitchen. So I guess I am the Secretary of the Interior, Secretary of the Interior Decorating. I'm doing a lot of bad jokes here. I feel like we haven't been on the air for a while. And this, yeah. I'm, here, I'm getting warmed up. I'm like Draymond Green coming back after uh, oh. deep therapy and time in the wilderness. Yeah. We're going to get there, Paul. Um, I have a few resolutions. Okay. And excuse me, folks, I'm getting over a little cough that was going around, but I want to stop doom scrolling on Twitter, which is going to be an impossibility. But this one, Paul, do you get that notification on your phone every Sunday at like 10 AM that tells you how many hours a day you're averaging on your, on your iPhone? No, I turn that off, Matt. You can turn that off. All right. Tell me if this sounds bad. I'm averaging per day, six hours and 37 minutes on my iPhone. Wow. Does it say what you're doing on that iPhone? Mm -mm. Doesn't say. Okay. I'd like to bring that number down in the new year, Paul. I think you could do it. I believe in you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Those are good resolutions. I'm going to think of some during this podcast. I, resolutions often are people deciding to, to not do things. And I remember a few years ago, back in my youth, I, I realized that was, that was foolish, that people do better if we aspire to something. So right. one year I did drink more coffee and I succeeded. And then the other year where I was actually in acting school and everyone was smoking cigarettes, mm. I decided to learn how to inhale cigarettes. That was my other New Year's resolution. Oh man. And then, I, you. and then I never had another cigarette again. All right. Well, I mean, listen, let's get in the hot tub time machine and go back to those days. I'd love to do oh. that, man. It must be some kind of hot tub time machine. Hey, so folks, welcome back. We've had two, three weeks off, two and a half weeks off. We've been in the lab growing the pod. Paul, it's some very exciting news, right? With the podcast, we want to kind of scratch that surface or just push through it. We now have a production team, Matt. We have people. We have people oh that we God. can blame for things that we do wrong. We've now grown mm -hmm. to the point where we, we actually needed to bring in some help and uh, I've gotten to the point where we actually can sort of pay these people. So it's exciting. 
We're doing great. I know. I mean, listen, some people are watching us right now on our brand new YouTube channel for Beat LA, which is very, very exciting. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the Niners, obviously, give our predictions for this Saturday's game versus the Packers, talk a little Giants offseason free agent market or lack thereof, and maybe touch on the Golden State Warriors death spiral and then finish up with the best things we saw. Um, But before we get into that, Paul, just quickly, I know we got to jump in, but um, did you watch the Emmys last night? Did you watch a little bit of this? I watched half of it and I I watched the Golden Globes too. I know we talked a little about Joe Coy. Apparently everyone's coming, all these stamps are coming to Joe Coy's defense. Steve Martin, Whoopi Goldberg, they know it's a very tough gig. Yo, I got the gig 10 days ago. You want a perfect monologue? Yo, shut up. I know in the Filipino community, you guys probably took that kind of hard. Can I say that? I feel like I got in trouble last time. No, you can't. You didn't get in trouble last time, but uh, this time it feels uh, warranted um, Okay. because I I want to defend him. Here's the thing, Paul. You know, we've talked a lot about the power of the neg and our superstitions and the jinx power that we have. That we have. resolutions, Matt, is to keep negging. I I think I, I, I talk about things being positive. It seems to be working. Well, I wanted to say we have these neg powers. And these jinx powers that we talk about, I didn't know that our powers transcended sports and could apply (laughs) to other arenas of the arts because we put the neg on Joe Coy. Yeah. And kaboom, and it imploded on him. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. A lot of power. But uh, I watched half of it last night. I I enjoyed it. I, I thought the 75th anniversary of the Emmys was a nice, they did some good old school TV, including bringing back the cast of my all-time favorite show, uh, Cheers, and uh, some other fun things like that. It did make me think, though, just how old everyone has gotten. And also, Carol Burnett was 90 years old. She looked pretty good for 90. A lot of, of, you know, face work, but she looked good. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? The Emmys made the Golden Globes look like community theater, like a cable access show. I mean, I loved the Emmys last night, the production value, the speeches, Christina Applegate coming out, making an appearance. It was very well-produced, a very efficient show. I agree. No, it felt like like it was actually done with someone's money, not by a private equity firm that bought an award show and hoped to resuscitate it and hired Joey Coy nine days before they decided to shoot it. Yo, I got the gig 10 days ago. You want a perfect monologue? Yo, shut up. But I only got about halfway through it. So I I will get through the rest of it. But I know that our two shows, Matt, we did not nag these shows. The shows that we picked as our two best shows of last year, Succession and The Bear, both basically ran the table. Well, Paul, you know, you always kind of give me my flowers for a good segue. So I want to give you uh, some flowers there for just a real tight segue. All our listeners know we love the show Succession. I joke around. I call Paul Kendall. We have an unhealthy obsession with the show. So in that vein, we're going to talk about it again really quickly. Matthew McFadden, is that how you say it? McFadden? McFadden, they keep saying. Yeah. McFadden won the Emmy for Best Actor for Succession, Paul, uh, Best Supporting Actor. And they asked him during the press conference afterwards if there's a Succession spinoff in the works. And he said, highly unlikely, but never say never, which got me thinking, Paul. We didn't go over this in the pre-show meeting. If you could have one spinoff show from Succession, what would you want? I'm going to give you four options. I came up with this. I'm feeling- I'm just glad you're not making me come up with this off the cuff. Thank you for multiple choice tests. Okay. A, the Disgusting Brothers. Tom navigates Waystar as CEO with Greg as his assistant. Two, the ambassador. Connor and Willa's marriage with him as the Slovenian ambassador, her cheating on him. Three, Golden Parachute a series following Frank and Carl's retirement. The eldest boy, Kendall moves to Bangkok and loses himself. Or five, Roman's empire following Roman as he finally tries to have sex. Any of those as the development exec pop to you? I'd watch all of them. I, 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 I It's the best thing I've ever heard. So I thought you were going to say we were going to follow Alan Ruck driving into Ruffalo's pizza in his SUV, three sheets to the wind, and then wasn't there also an auction for a succession we could talk oh about? Oh my God. No, that's a great point. In the last last two days ago, there was a succession auction. I sent you the link. 236 items, Paul, went for a total of $630,000. I have the list here. 
Kendall's prop American Express Platinum cards and driver's license. So that's license. what I, I want his driver's license. It was a three pack. It was his credit cards plus the driver's license went for 10K was the bid that won that. Pet Pro, our sponsor is not paying us that much. I can't, they, I can't do that. I could, I could probably make a Kendall Roy fake ID, ask like my nephew who's newly out of college to make one for me. That'd be cheaper. I can make one for you in Photoshop, Paul. Okay, great. Let's yeah. do that. Hey, so I a couple of things on that. Alan Ruck driving into the pizza place. You know, he was Cameron and Ferris Bueller. So it is interesting. You know, again, so I like things that are bookendy, like the the car in Ferris Bueller, his dad's car, and now as a grown up, he drives into a pizza place. The other thing is, I want to answer your question. The best yes. show of the ones that you just pitched me. Of course, everyone knows the buddy comedy. It would be Greg and, and Tom. Tom. That that one, I love that, but it's not. That's not the one I'm looking for. The one, remind me, there was a second or third. It was one of those two. Remind me which one they were. There was the Disgusting Brothers, the yeah, Ambassador, yeah. Golden right. Parachute, Eldest Boy, and Roman's Empire. Okay, I got two ideas. Two ideas. Okay. We have a lot of studio execs listening to us right now. I know I got two ideas. Okay, one, Eldest Boy, I think could be done. Last night we were watching like Facts of Life stuff. Remember all the spin off? They would do like. They yeah. would put two shows together, the crossovers. I think there should be a crossover in this season's White Lotus. White Lotus is going to be in Asia at a, like a meditation self-help retreat, and Kendall shows up there. So that's oh, one idea. I love that, Paul. Fuck the patriarchy! And then the Slovenia one. So the U.S. men's soccer team is actually playing Slovenia this weekend in a friendly so we could start shooting it this weekend, fly Alan Ruck out there, start to get some B-roll. I think the Slovenia ambassador idea is brilliant. So I'm going to work, I'm going to start working on both those pitches. You know, and I love Willa because Willa's just cheating on him. She's in like a polyamorous relationship with him. At least she thinks so, uh, which is kind of nice. So uh, th- I would love that too. Paul, quickly, I just wanted to say- There's a lot of success here. By the way, just so Matt, last week I had an Iceland uh, coffee cup. This is yeah. a Finnish coffee cup. I know you want to go to rehab in Finland too. So I thought they have some nice ones there. Because, and to, to segue into this final point on succession to put it to bed, the one prop that I would want, and don't judge me or come at me or judge me, I don't give a shit. Kendall's cocaine vials with white powder, that prop went for 2K in the bid. Can you imagine you're like partying? Say we're like jumping the hot tub time machine. We go 15 years back. We're partying and stuff. You're whatever. You're getting it on and you have those vials. And you're like, this is Kendall's vial from Succession. That's kind of a baller move. How do we know they're his vials? They have like his monogram on it? I don't know. You'd have to, they probably send you a certificate of authentic- authentication that you'd have to carry around when you party. I need to go to that rehab in Finland, Paul. Jesus Christ. Clearly, oh I'm going to get those for you and, and turn them into cufflinks, maybe. So that'll be your Christmas gift. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick break <laughs> and we're going to be right back with a little 49ers talk. All right, we're back. We're going to talk a little bit of San Francisco 49ers, baby. We're in the playoffs. The divisional round is this Saturday. And we're playing the Green Bay Packers, Paul, because the Dallas Cowboys, a tradition unlike any other. Oh, well, hold on, Matt. I'm getting, I'm getting ready. Uh, for our conversation here by putting on my 49ers bib. I love that. I love that little 49ers bib. Is the maid going to come in with a little uh, <laughs> with a little lobster roll for you Oh right my now? God, that's such a good idea. Hold on, let me text her. I think we got this together. I think, didn't we get this when we went to the Packers game in 2019? We're going to talk about that in a second. But, oh, we uh, are, we are. But like, but what do you think? I mean, last night we saw, or two nights ago, two days ago, the Dallas Cowboys, I mean, it death taxes and they blow it in the playoffs. That's the best thing I saw. I'm going to have something else to say later, but that was glorious, Paul. I mean, didn't you enjoy that? It was great. I'm not a gambling man, but there are times when you just know the inevitability of something. And that seemed like that was inevitably going to go very poorly for the Cowboys. I'm worried about the Packers. I don't want to jump into your leading off this section, but if you've dug in a little bit, they are a very hot team right now with the second best offense in the NFC. And it's supposed to rain. On Saturday. Oh, so many things we could talk about right there. I just wanted to say, to to put a button on the Cowboys, I can't stop watching Cowboy fan reactions to losing that game on TikTok. (laughs) Because it's just glorious. You know, they're punching the TVs. I don't care if they're manufactured, but watching Cowboy fans melt down and cry is one of the best things in the world. 
Well, and particularly, you could argue that the 49ers did something to both them and the Eagles, that maybe when they crushed them, that they made them doubt themselves so much that they ultimately fractured and their seasons imploded. Paul, before we get to the uh, the Niners Packers, there was an article in SFGate this weekend talking about Brock Purdy's family's Mesa Marketplace swap meet in Mesa, Arizona, where they have Purdy's Fantastic Spa Outlet Company. Did you read this article? I did, of course, read that article, Matt. I read all things related to the Purdy family. Do you know Brock Purdy's brother's name? Are you looking at my notes? Are you in my screen? You mean, you're talking about Chubba Purdy that just transferred from Nebraska to San Jose State? That guy? Who also was at Florida State first. He's on his third school. Chubba Purdy. That is his younger brother. He was Arizona Mr. Football, so he, clearly he was a pretty good player. But uh, I'm sure he's having some issues with his brother becoming so famous and him stuck with a nickname Chubba. Oh, no, he's riding that coattail in a beautiful way. Do you think that's his real name, Chubba, or do you think that's, do you think that's on the birth certificate? I looked it up. His real name is Preston, oh. and he, he was a chubby kid. So his parents decided to torture him for the rest of his life by calling him Chubba. So the Packers, Niners, this Saturday – we haven't hosted the Packers in a playoff game since we were there for the 2020 NFC Championship game. Do you remember this, Paul? I remember it really well, Matt. Even though I had a plastic flask of vodka strapped to my inner thigh, I remember it exceptionally well. So I thought we snuck in vodka, but it was, was it wine? I thought we had white wine Chardonnay packs taped to our thighs as we snuck in. We had both, Matt. So Good stuff. Good stuff, Paul. All right, so let's get into it. Packers, you got you, you brought it up, Jordan Love. They have the second ranked offense from like week nine on, Paul. Week nine on. You got the Bakersfield Bandit coming in named Jordan Love. You're the king of the neg. I mean, give it to me. Give me all your fears and desires and all the darkness that you want to put on, on, on this game that scares you about it. I'm very worried about this game, Matt. I know they got a buy, but look what happened this last weekend. All the underdogs just plowed through. The Niners, I cannot get the image out of that, of that Ravens game out of my head. Jordan Love just had the first perfect passer rating game by a Packer quarterback ever. It's going to rain. Look, if Armistead's back and healthy and they can actually stop the run, I think that's good. I'm worried about this game. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out who these 49ers are. They, haven't, they, they don't win close games. I don't know. So you haven't asked me to predict yet, but I am sufficiently nervous is what I would say. Paul, to your point about the negs, and I know people tune into this show for the for the neg, expectations are higher than ever this year for us, Paul. I mean, it's, it's Super Bowl or bust, but I will say we do have a thick skin of disappointment over the last decade, starting with us losing to the Ravens in 2012 through being bounced by the Seahawks. You know, then we lost to the Chiefs, then lost two more times in the NFC Championship in the last couple of years. All that's to say, I think tempering expectations, I feel like we have a thick skin. You know, I'm not saying the sky's falling like the, the Cowboy fans. <laughs> But I think a healthy neg to say that there's a 50-50 chance they're going to break our heart is a healthy headspace to be in, Paul, if not this week, then the week after. Thank you, Matt. See, I'm all, I, I'm all about the he mind space, healthy healthy headspace. And I do try to temper expectations. I read somewhere actually in the, in the break here that there is a fine line between sort of pessimism and the fact that people do need to temper their expectations, that apparently human intelligence has, has taught us to not be overly enthusiastic because then you start missing the actual real threats in front of you or overly optimistic. So I think you're right. I think we have a realistic fear of this game for real reasons. I think, look, if you look at the, the trauma that is to be a Niner fan in the post kind of Bill Walsh, you know, George Seifert, Steve Young, Joe Montana era, is that they've gotten close a lot and they found ways to choke. Now, they tend to not choke in the first round of the playoffs. So I'm not making a prediction yet, but I just think any, I think people were sleeping on the Packers when they thought that the Cowboys game was a, was a surprise. They were wrong. I mean, the Packers were the hottest team in the NFC 
going into that game. I love it when you go to self-help corner. It's it's my favorite thing that you do. And to the to the listeners, just a little uh, to give I you. I want li- you to know that I pitched with your help. We pitched Kendall's self-help corner. We combined the two. We did a crossover. Well. To give a little teaser, Paul, for what's coming on this show in a couple of weeks, we have Beat LA therapist, uh, Nick Moyaris, who's going to be on the pod in a couple of weeks. And he'll be a delight for all our listeners because, you know, we're going to have a licensed marriage family counselor, drug addict, sports psychologist, therapist on this show, highly regarded. And he's a good friend of the pod and, and of me and Paul. And he's going to answer all our psychological questions on negativity. And he's going to answer questions from the viewers on your fandom and how it relates to your loved ones. So we, we do have that coming up, Paul. I have a feeling he's going to say, don't start a podcast about sports and entertainment 15 months after you get married. Oh, let's save that. That's going to be that's going to be the entire show. Here's my worries. This is a heavyweight matchup between two quarterbacks of the future. I mean, we got Brock Purdy, Jordan Love. Here's my worries. Like you said, the number three offense. Special teams, our boy Jake Moody, he actually had a great year. Didn't have a lot of clutch kicks and missed the one game winner. For the win. And then missed two field goals in the, in the final game. Had a great year, but I'm worried about him, obviously, in crunch time. And like you said, rain on Saturday, our cornerback depth. This is what I do love, Paul. We're coming in rested. We're coming off a of bye week. We're always unstoppable coming off of a bye. We have the Packers number. And Green Bay has been balling, but they have a bottom 10 defense. That's true. That's true. And, you know, and often, you know, the teacher beats the student. We know Matt LaFour is, is, is a student of... Shanahan's. I always put some stock into the psychology of that. What are you doing? What are you doing with that? With that forty nine er bib? You kind of have. You kind of. It's almost like you're doing an ole or or you like, kind a, ma- like a magic show, Matt. I'm hoping to get rid of your cough by waving it in front of you. Oh, beautiful. I agree with everything you're saying. I'm worried though that we won't be there together, and that may have been the secret sauce that. Oh, don't put that on me. I'm going to be there at the game with beat LA legal analyst Chris Merrill, also <laughs> friend of the pod. <laughs> And Paul, okay. wait, why aren't you going to be there? Or do we want to talk about this for the fans? I know Paul's a diehard. He's a diehard. Don't take his fan card. But you're not going to actually be watching the if, game. I don't know if we should talk about it. I may be watching the game. I will be following the game. Or I may do a total news blackout and go home and drink because it's going to be a Saturday and I can drink on Saturdays in January. But Matt, I have been cast in a short film. You got an I, acting I, job, baby. I guess they heard the podcast or it's a pet pro commercial. I, I, I can't really say what it is yet. It's uh, I cited confidentiality agreement, but I am acting in something on Saturday. Can you say your, what your is, character is? Can you just say like what they've, what kind of lane they put you in? I'm a, a biotech executive with questionable motives. Dude, that's such typecasting. That's so you. Thank you. I think thank you. The questionable motives part. Is you? No, that's right. But I don't know anything about biotech. I avoided physics in high school because it seemed hard. You know, I was talking about you today with uh, someone who sh- shall not be named. You know how I described you? I said deep down, this guy's Don Draper. Wow, that's nice. That's because that's why because you think I drink too much. I don't know what I thought when I said that, Paul. That's for the listeners to figure out. Prediction time. Paul. Oh, God. Okay. oh, by the way, folks, just to put a button on that last thing, folks. Uh, yes, one half of BLA is going to be at the game. Text me. Hit me up. Um, I'm going to be there with a bunch of Phantom BLA merch, which I'm going to be giving away. <laughs> hey, you so, joked the BLA merch is actually finally happening. So it is. just so you just stand by, everybody. We'll we'll have it in time for I don't know Valentine's Day because nothing says I love you like like a BLA thong or something. Oh yeah, ooh ooh, right? That was that wasn't in the production meeting. Thong. I was talking yeah. like keychain keychains and stickers. You're going to thongs. Prediction time. I want you to go first. First of all, I need you clearly the the plastic flask attached to the to the inner thigh was part of the magic elixir that got us through the game in 2019, 2020. It was 2020 technically, right before COVID started. And right before I went to the Super Bowl and saw them lose. So if you need me to get you a plastic flask, you could borrow the one. I think the the good luck charm we had at that NFC championship game wasn't the uh the, the booze we snuck in. I, we were so hammered at halftime, we were cheating smokes in the stairwell at Levi's.
<laughs> I think that might have uh, been the reason we won. Look, there are many things you may have to. I'll, I'll talk to you at halftime. Call me at halftime. I'll take a break. I'll, I'll be in my my trailer, you know, at, at on the set. Yeah, yeah. Uh, more, more like more like sitting on an apple box get, or a milk crate. Get, get, yeah. get, get, getting like a back rub, probably. So call me at halftime, and and I'll I'll, I'll guide you through it in abs- at absentia. Look, of course you know what I'm going to do here, Matt. Well, hold on. first off, folks, it's uh, the Niners, Paul. Niners are a, a nine and a half point favorite. I know you always like to know the spread. I do, and it hasn't it hasn't moved. I mean, I know it's only Tuesday, but I, I'm a little surprised it hasn't moved a little bit. That seems that seems large to me. But what's the over under? I didn't get that for you, Paul. God. On purpose, because yeah. friend of the pod, Aaron White, goes. Paul always needs to know the over under <laughs> to do his his beautiful mind calculations, and he's like, you should take it away from him. So I'm not going to give it to you. It's true. I've always get that wrong too. Look, we all know what I'm doing. I'm going nag. I cannot go against that here. I think that. I think that the, the Niners are not going to win on Saturday at oh. 5 o'clock. I love it. That's what I think. I think that, that something's coming their way that's, that's scary down, down, uh, down Santa Clara way. In the old Great American, what was that? What was it, the amusement park down there? They went Great America. Great, Great America, America, baby. I saw my first concert at Great America, Paul. It was a new edition. Back in the uh, 80s. Jesus. Wow. You know what my first concert was? Uh, let me guess. I'll just date you. I just date you so yeah. hard. No, no, no. I, give, I, I don't know. Depeche Mode. No. Jefferson Starship. Holy moly. Yeah. And wow. my second concert ever was the Who and the Clash, which should have been my first concert ever, but that was my second concert ever. I used to love playing Jefferson Starship on the jukebox as a kid at this Italian restaurant. Just because it was Starship, I thought it reminded me of space or some shit, or some Star Wars stuff. If I am a bad person and I, I end up down below, you know, purgatory, hell, whatever it is, they will be playing. We built this city and nothing's going to stop us now on an endless loop. I love it. You know what they're going to be playing for me? They're going to be what? playing the, the Humpty Dance by Digital Underground. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Digital Underground at Outside Lance a couple of years ago. It was pretty. It, it was pretty good. I could do a, a great impression of Shock G, and I used to do it at weddings. Greg Piero's wedding back 15 years ago, I grabbed the microphone and did it. It brought the house down. It was a top five moment in my life is when I did the, the Humpty Dance at a wedding. Um, Paul, you didn't give us a score. You got to give us a score. I do have to give a score. Okay. I think it's going to be close. I think that we're going to have some issues with Moody. That's my concern. The guy, they would have won the game against the Rams. I know the Rams game didn't count, but they would have won that game if he hadn't missed an easy field goal and an extra point. His first extra point of the season, I think it's in his head. His old team just won the national championship. He wasn't there for it. He's probably missing out. Maybe he partied with those guys a little bit, flew back for the title game in Houston. And I think they're going to lose 24 24- 23. I love it, Paul. I love it. And now I'm going to stop the madness for all of our listeners who are like, Paul's lost the plot. 49ers are going to win this game. It might be a little bit close, but we're on a mission from God this year. Cue the Blues Brothers, baby. I guess pause, pause. Nick is new to the show. Our editor, Nick, is new to the show. Let him find it. They're not going to catch us. We're on a mission from God. Uh, 34-17, Paul. We're going to fucking roll. It might be a little close halftime, but we're going to walk away from this thing. 34-17. That's it. There's no, there's no if, ands, or buts. Who's the star of the game? Great question, Paul. Great question. You know what? I think, I think I'm going to keep it easy. It's going to be Christian McCaffrey, just because the Packers got a little bit of a secondary, Jair Alexander. They're a little soft up front. I think it's not going to be sexy, but it's just going to be a ton of, this feels like, and also because of the rain, a little tight end George Kittle. It's going to be, it's going to be the white triangle of Purdy Kittle. And <laughs> Christian McCaffrey. And I can say that because I'm half Filipino. It's going to be the white triangle. White triangle. You were talking about Kendall's Coke paraphernalia again. I'm dropping, the, I'm dropping the white triangle on this pod. Oh, um, okay, Matt. Could you take over? Can you host the show now? Oh, I, my I God. Can, and I'm not coughing, too. All right, good. Look, let's hope that we've counteracted each other as we often do. Yin Yang, Harley Davidson, the Marlboro Man, as we said. Previously, uh, and we're going to, the Niners will win, but I still don't think they're going to win. So Okay, great. Well, this is a good segue into this next thing. I think they're going to win. And I think next week, because let's just do some quick predictions on the other three games. Oh, I think yeah. next, I think next week they're going to play the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions are going to be hosting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think that the, the Lions roll. Paul, your thoughts? Oh, that's a tough one. The Lions, I mean, their history. And again, I'm a big believer that teams' histories matter. And I guess you could argue by winning that game, 
They exercised last week against the Rams, which again, an excellent beat LA moment. You always need to appreciate those and mention those. Uh, it's great to see the Rams go down. I think that they definitely have purged some demons. I think they're going to win this next game against the Bucks. Yes. Lions, Niners, NFC Championship. Uh, in the AFC, Texans at Ravens. I'm rooting for the Texans. I love the Texans. I love D'Amico Ryans, what he's doing there, taking the worst team to the playoffs, to the divisional. C.J. Stroud, the first Ohio State quarterback to be good in the NFL in ages. But it doesn't happen. We don't want to see the Ravens win. But the 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 Disney movie ends. Ravens roll against the Texans. What do you think, Paul? This is my upset alert, Matt. I do this with the Giants. I just when teams get on a roll, either good or bad, I think it's hard to get in the way of destiny and sort of mind fuckingness. And Lamar Jackson is terrible in the playoffs. I think they're going to lose again. I think that they've got a. I think they've got. They've got an issue. And I think and CJ Stroud looked at the second coming last week. Cleveland had the best defense in the NFL going into that game. And the Texans took the woodshed. I'm I'm picking the Texans in an outright win on the road in Baltimore. I fucking love that, Paul. I love it. You should bet some money on that because the, the odds on that, I'm sure, are pretty uh, heavily favored. By the favored way, you said the Super, the Super Bowl odds, we absolutely 20 bucks on the, on the Texans to go all the way. I think you win like $600 or something like that. Or even more, I would think even more. Yeah. But yeah, no, no, you should uh, call. Uh, you should call uh, Carmine, Carmine <laughs> over at uh, the Formosa Cafe. <laughs> okay. You want to bet offline, like our buddy of the pod, uh, Mark Antani. Actually, he's not a buddy of the pod. He's actually jealous of our podcast. But he bets. He has to bet overseas. He has to go to like Bermuda and do the online thing. But what? you got a guy. You got a guy. You got a guy. Legal betting in California. I go to DraftKings. No, you can't, Paul. I really. I don't it's, know anything about illegal. it. No, it's I'm not, not legal a gambling here. man. Yeah. I, I gamble only in my career and love. And on the tennis court. All right. Big, the big game of the week. Chiefs at Bills. I'm going to tell you, all of these, obviously, Niner Nation wants the fucking Chiefs to lose. I think all I'm going to go first. You've gone first in every one of these. I'm going okay, to go, go, go first in this hey, one. You got to go. Go. Unless you've got a take on this. You got a whole thing that you want to do here? No, no. Boom, boom, boom. You go. So this is the great match, the rematch that everybody wants to see. First time that Patrick Mahomes has ever had a road playoff game. You know that? He's only played at home or in the Super Bowl in 15 previous playoff games, which is crazy. So I'm going to go with the Bills. I think they're the hot hand. I think it's their time. I think they're going to lose in the championship game because they're the Bills. Um, or maybe the Super Bowl because they're the Bills. And they like losing in the Super Bowl. I think the Bills are going to win this game. I think they got hot at the right time. Hey, I'm with you, Paul. Uh, here's my fear. I mean, I think America wants the Chiefs to lose. We're tired of the Chiefs. And it's just not It's not just a Niner thing. So tired of the Chiefs. By the way, I'm worried that the Niners have been pulled into the annoying Chiefs vortex because – Kyle Juszczyk's wife designed Taylor Swift's puffy jacket that she wore in the game last week. And I think that that's another reason I'm nagging the Niners. Okay, good. I mean, I love where you go. I think that's great, though, for, for uh, a, a wag. Is that what they call them? Is that derogatory? I don't know. I'm just, you know, I'm trying to you're be just, up with the you're just You're just because you're half Filipino, you can get away with anything. Listen, Christian, I love like a wag who's actually doing something good with her thing. I, mean, I think that's great for Christian, Kristen Juszczyk. Okay. I think it's great for it too. I'm just saying it may not be good for our team. But when you you know when you go Brock Purdy, McCaffrey, Kittle, and then you go to Yus- Kyle Yuschek, it becomes the white square. Oh, Jesus, man. You're not wrong. I mean, I guess, yeah. All right, listen. Uh, the only way that the- There are like fix- 10 different things I wanted to say, but every one of them I thought was going to get me in trouble. So I just left it there. Paul, the only way the Chiefs win is because the script has been written by New York, and you you love a good conspiracy. They need they need the ratings. They're gonna they're gonna make it so fucking Taylor Swift can be in a booth on the AFC Championship. But the fucking Chiefs fuck the basically saved the Peacock streaming service single handedly. So you know what I'm saying, Paul? Twenty three million fucking views on that thing. I refuse, but they got twenty three million views on a game that nobody could watch. Uh, on a network that nobody watches. The writer's strike is over. So the, the writers are back in the NFL headquarters in the bunker and they're writing these scripts and they're going to make it, they're going to fuck the Bills and uh, the Chiefs are going to advance. I'm going to root for the Bills. The Chiefs are going to advance. That's what I'm going to do on this. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to be right back. 
All right, we're back, folks. And before we do this next segment, I think this is a good tie-in. I think this is a good time to mention our sponsor of the pod, Paul. It's your favorite time of the podcast. Uh, This episode, ladies and gentlemen, is brought to you by Pet Pro Supply Co. Go to Pet Pro Supply Co. for all your pet needs, Paul. If you forgot that uh, gift for a friend with a healthy obsession with their pets, go to Pet Pro Supply Co. for doggy beds to cat toys. They have everything that you need. Use code BEATLA for 10% off. Paul, they emailed me this week with a new product, the convertible cat backpack called the Navigator. And it looks really, really cool. Maybe I'll get a cat. Maybe that's my New Year's resolution. I don't even know what a cat backpack is. I had to pick up my cat once. I don't have a cat anymore, but I had to pick up my cat for my neighbors once. And I didn't have a cat carrying thing. And the cat st- stood on the back seat like it was going to pounce on me the entire time I was driving. I was convinced that's how I was going to die. So whatever this cat backpack in could save your life. Yeah, there you go. Pet Pro Supply Co. They have cat backpacks that can save your life. Matt, I once stole a cat we, 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 when I was a little kid. We'll talk. We can talk about that next episode. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's put that on. Put it in the, the episode twelve show notes. Uh, I brought up that usually it's the sponsor of Pet Peeves, the Pet Peeves section. I don't really have one today, but we could talk about the Golden State Warriors as an overall umbrella pet peeve. Please okay? don't tell me that your news resolution is is to get rid of pet peeves. People love the pet peeves, Matt. My no, friend Tony do- Campaglia. Your fellow Italian, although he's all Italian, he just loves the pet peeve. So don't, 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 don't get too good this year. Okay, guess what? This one's just right for Tony. I got one for you, Tony. Okay, here's my pet peeve: Florida professional, uh, professional crowds for professional sports teams in the state of Florida. Tampa Bay game last night on Monday night. It sounded like a high school game. They barely cheered. Go watch a Miami Heat game. Okay, they're not even in the stands in the playoffs. It's half full. Okay, because they're at the nightclub. Go watch a Tampa Bay Rays game. No one's in the stand in the playoffs. Florida, great college. Take away all their fucking sports teams because none of these people support their professional teams in the state of Florida. I had no idea you cared about this at all. And I've known you a long time. It upsets me. Uh, Paul, Golden State Warriors, they lost last night. Draymond returned. The sky's fallen, Paul. Take take over here. What what do we have to look forward to with this Warriors? Rebuild time? What are we doing? I think we move quickly on this one. It looks bad. I think their defense will improve now that Draymond's back. But I think they're going to take a trade before February 8th. I think they're getting old. Steph is top 10 in the league. I think 11th in the league in turnovers. They turn the ball over. More than like like they're drunk, like they're drunken guys, like who who can't find their keys. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. So no, I think the, I think things are bad, and I and I don't know how you fix it with a bunch of old guys and a bunch of two young guys. So I think they got to make a trade. I hope they hold on to Kaminga. I have a prediction. I think we have predictions coming up for. 2024 in a minute or two. So I'm going to save my Warriors prediction for that. Well, I think, you know, the, the big question is like, would a, a game changer, like say we can get Siakam, would that actually make this a better team? I think it would make us a playoff team, but this isn't a championship team. Last night after the game, to your point, Paul, Draymond Green just said, we can't guard. They can't guard anybody. They're old. They don't have any two-way players. Here's a question I have for you, Paul, quickly. Has, has Steve Kerr checked out? He's on the last year of his deal. He doesn't have a contract for next year. I mean, he looks like uh, he's kind of over it a little bit. I mean, do you, that's that would be a bombshell. Do you think he's uh, he's do you think he's there next year? It's a great question, Matt. I feel like that he kind of lost the locker room after Kaminga went off on him twice in those two games where he pulled him in the fourth quarter. Something happened, and then those next two games they gave up like 150 points each to bad. You know, a bad Pelican team and a bad, I think it was Toronto team. And they, I think, he, I feel like he's lost the locker room. And I don't think he's a lifer coach like his mentor Popovich, who, who by the way, has been in San, in San Antonio for the last, you know, five years with terrible teams. Like that's never going to, like nobody cares in San Antonio, but that's not going to play in their new stadium in San Francisco with Joe Lacob. So I think there's a good chance that Kerr packs it in after this year. He knows the handwriting on the wall. This stuff doesn't last. You know, I, I love it when you go like a much tamer version of Skip Bayless. I don't think he's lost the locker room. I think he's the most accessible coach out there. I do think he just doesn't have the personnel. But you know what they say, Matt? Look, defense is all about effort. 
if they really can't defend guys, that's on somebody. It's the way they built this team. They were behind the curve. I've talked to you about that offline a lot, about how we were just behind the curve. But I'm not going to go inside basketball on this pod for the people here. Let's just, I agree with you. Let's just not trade Jonathan Kaminga. Paul, uh, this is your favorite part of the pod. No, we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to talk a quick a little bit of San Francisco Giants. Paul, I wanted to, to tell you, I don't know if this is breaking news, but the Giants finally signed a hitter, Paul. Oh, you're putting on I'm the putting Giants on my hat. Gi- my Giants hat. They finally signed a hitter. We've talked about this. No, 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 no. I don't think you know. The Giants finally signed a power right-handed bat. His name is Dusty Baker, who oh, is now yeah, yeah. who is now a special assistant with the Giants. The Giants have turned into like a greatest hits band. They're just playing the hits from 2010 and before, and and just hoping to make enough money to keep the lights on. Well, uh, we got so we signed uh, Jordan Hicks. You know, we what, traded for Robbie Ray. Probably no Snell is what they're saying, but you know, there's a couple other uh, insiders that think we still have a shot at Snell. What do, what do you think? I don't think they're going to sign Snell. They already have too many pitchers, even if they're shitty pitchers, and he's going to be too expensive. And clearly, it doesn't. Farhan's going to be Farhan. He keeps being Farhan. Tell that me about it. Real, Tell me that about would him. Be, that would be a real contract. Uh, I want to do an aside real quick, yeah, give and then to I'm going to get into it. Then we got to keep moving here. I know. So the Giants uh, signed Jung Ho Lee. We're all excited about their new center fielder. His brother-in-law just signed with the Padres. His name is Wu Suk Go. What did you say? Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Did, I get, did, I, did I just get? Did I just get beeped? Like did I, I didn't say a bad word. Let's just stop right there. Let's stop right there. What's his name? Woo suck go. Woo suck go. You can fill in your own punchlines here. I, I did a couple that were to friends. I will not do them here. Uh, I don't want to get canceled. But that is his brother in law. Jung Ho Lee is married to Woo Suck Go's sister. So he's married to Suck Go, I guess. I don't really know how Korean names work, but it seems like her name also might be Suck Go. I hate the Padres, Paul, but can you get me that jersey for uh, for my birthday? <laughs> I. It's just so great. It, but I don't, I don't want it for me. As we, say it the, as we say in the writer's room, it just it writes itself. Yeah, so, it yeah. Anyway, so there's, there's that. The other thing that amused me immensely uh, in baseball uh, in the last few weeks was the interview that, if you haven't seen it or heard it, that, that Farhan did with Tim Kawakami. I recommend it highly. Farhan did a couple of things in it that were incredible for a guy with like a job that we would all kill for president of baseball operations, my dream job, right? Like if I could do my life over, I would have gone and I would have been an intern for a sport, a baseball team and figured out a way to work in a front office. I didn't know that was an option. Or the secretary, the secretary of the interior. Or secretary of the interior. Anyway, he basically said that he, the thing about his job that's so difficult is all the criticism he gets because it upsets his parents and that his parents are in a place in their life where they shouldn't have to worry about their son. And I'm thinking to myself, dude, you're making like $8 million a year running a baseball team. Like you're doing okay. You need to chill out and you need to stop having daddy and parental issues. Oh, also he said, I got to add this one too. He said about his buddy, the quants who've like taken over, you know, like the, the, the analytics guys, the scientists, the propeller heads have taken over like the lot, literally like the conference room and everything else. And like the, the press conference room, he basically said, people criticize these, these guys. They need to understand that they all could make it, be making a lot more money doing other things and working in baseball. So they need to respect that they've made this choice to work in baseball because I mean, they're so smart. They could go work at a hedge fund or some other thing. Anyway, every time the guy talks, it makes me more angry. So that's my pet peeve. Yeah, it's a good rant, Paul. I mean, yeah, I mean, come on, pull up your pants, uh, Farhan. I'm sure he's a nice guy. Look, I'm sure he's doing what the owner, what ownership wants. You know, they've got a lot of owners there. They all want to make a little bit of money. And again, they won three world championships in the last, you know, now decade and a half. And I said, they're a greatest hits band. They're going to re-sign Belt. They're going to bring out, I don't know, maybe Barry Bonds can still hit a home run. I, I just think that they they're not, they don't really want to win. They just want to not lose money at this point. Well, I think, Paul, what's going to happen is we're going to sign Matt Chapman. Chapman hasn't hit over 250 in the last five years. It's Evan Longoria 2.0 and not the good Evan Longoria from last year with Arizona. You know, go out and sign George Soler, a Hoskins or Bellinger. That would make it fine and I'd be okay with it. But, you know, who knows if that's going to happen, Paul. So there's our baseball talk for our uh, my brother, Russ Medina, and we'll be right back. And we're back. I was just saying in the little break there uh, that we had that Paul looked pretty. You need to do this, this lumberjack couture that you got going on? 
So now that we're on YouTube, Matt, it seemed almost like 49ers colors, right? Mm. Mm. Okay. So red and black. You know, you know Paul Bunyan, red label. Uh, yeah. I just okay. just made that up. Folks, we're, we're here for the, uh, the best things that we saw. It's the segment we all love and people love. Uh, best things we saw. This is our first one for 2024, starting the list early. Paul, would you like me to go first or would you like to go first here on the best things we saw 2024? So we're not doing predictions. Have we done enough predictions? We can just keep moving. You want? It's up to you. Do you have a good one? Because I don't have a, a 2024 prediction. I think we've already done a lot of predictions. Kerr's not coming back. Like I put my hat, it's like what Karnak, whatever, like I put my, this, I can go into the future with my thing. I think, so this is my prediction. Yeah. And then, then we'll get on it. I think Draymond is going to have the meltdown of all meltdowns at some point before the season's over. Cause he's got, he's trying to like keep it together. Right. And he's just going to fucking bottle up. He's going to lose it. And then he's, he's going to be gone and he'll be suspended for the rest of the season. And then next year he'll show up at, in a Lakers uniform. Oh, that's great. Cause I have a prediction off of that. I, th- I was telling someone the other day, I think Draymond Green reinvents himself into sort of like this Zen Buddha master and completely goes the other way and becomes very docile and friendly to the point where we we can't even rev him up anymore because it's almost so he's, like so he's gonna suck. So he's like a Dalai Lama. He's gonna show up in like orange robes and, and then he might retire and go to India. There's no Nepal. question that he's more worried at this stage about his future broadcasting career than he is about his current basketball career because he's totally fucked up his brand. He's gone over the edge. So maybe you're right, Matt. Maybe that's what happens. When in doubt, go to self help. We know that. Best things we saw 2024. I'm going to go first, Paul, because I think yours, I think I know what yours is going to be. Uh, we're like an old married couple. You already know what I'm going to say before I say it, man. But I, I think, surprise you. but yours is much more interesting. So I'm just going to okay. blow, blow through mine. Uh, I'm going to recommend Breakpoint. Breakpoint. Oh, tennis. Two, yeah, yes, tennis. Baby, baby. I, I saw it this weekend, uh, season two. It was the best thing I saw this weekend. It's not as good as season one, Paul, but still great. It's a show on Netflix where they dive into the behind the scenes, kind of hard knocks of professional tennis. Um, season one was outstanding where they followed all of these young and up and coming players, players on the cusp like Zabalenka, Tiafo, and jo- then they went to like the Djokovic's. Season two is great. These players can't hide these players kind of live like rock stars traveling from city to city with their hotels and their coaches. It's fascinating. The players wear their emotions on their sleeve, as you know, as a tennis player, Paul. What's really interesting, Paul, is Netflix has kind of carried this torch from like HBO Hard Knocks through ESPN 30 for 30. And what they've done with these behind the scenes shows, like what they've done with Formula One and now tennis, it's great. They just, they're great at humanizing these players and it's a really, it's a great show. I can't say much about it, much more about it. But if you're a diehard tennis fan, Breakpoint has plenty of action to offer. And if you're a newbie for the sport, uh, to the sport, it's the perfect introduction. So Breakpoint, season two on Netflix, best thing I saw. Uh, go check it out, folks. I'm excited for what you got, Paul. Paul, tell me, what's the best thing you saw? Hold on, I can't, I can't leave tennis without saying something about tennis. Yes. You know, so then I'll get to the next thing I saw. Even if you're not a tennis fan, this is the whole point of this show, just like it was the Formula One show. So uh, I recommend it for anyone. The other thing about tennis that Matt alluded to, which I think people don't quite understand, is these guys are totally out there by themselves. It's the only sport that's actually golf. They even have a caddy in golf. And boxing, they have a three-minute round. They go back to the corner. They can talk to people. Tennis, that's what's fascinating about this series in part is these guys these and women are literally touring the world by themselves and the mental aspects of tennis are absolutely brutal. You have no one to blame but yourself. Unlike this podcast where things get fucked up, I can blame Matt. And now Nick. So, yeah, wonderful. But best things I, I saw, I don't know if it's the best thing I saw. I just feel like we have to talk about it. And Matt, you are right. I think you could guess. What am I going to talk about, Matt? Saltburn, baby. Oh, God, yes, yeah, Saltburn. It's, per- it's, it's a perfect movie for you. Okay, you know my genre, rich people acting badly. It is my, I, I love those shows, White Lotus, Succession, we can go on and on, Downton Abbey, I love them all. Did I like Saltburn? Nah, kind of. Do I understand why it's gone viral? Yes, I do. I read this great article, I will not take credit for it, that said it is Brideshead Revisited for the TikTok generation. And basically what is how now happened with movies is that they, 
and I don't know if the director did this on purpose or so she's a genius. She Her Promising Young Women, which I quite liked, which she won an Academy Award for Best Screenplay, Carrie Mulligan, came out a couple of years ago. So she's clearly very talented. But this is a collection of extreme moments that play well on YouTube and TikTok and other things. Like, uh, spoiler alert, Barry Kagan, the kind of funny, scrunchy face Irish boxer who's the lead guy in it, basically fucking the soil of a grave to the guy that he was in love with, whose life he's also trying to destroy. I may have given up too much away. There is a lot of things like that in this. So if you like TikTok viral moments that is stitched together in a movie, and you also like, you know, rich people acting badly, which I do, definitely check out Saltburn. You're going to want to talk about it at your next cocktail party. A lot of the people listening to our show are not Hollywood types. Definitely go check it out. Because again, it is... It's not often these days that these movies are kind of becoming water cooler topics. And so everyone should go see it. You can talk about your next cocktail party and you'll never get the image of him fucking his, the dead guy's grave out of your head ever again. Paul, first off, I want to say, um, I love how you did spoiler alert. I got talked at by a fan of our show, Dave Tenenbaum, the other day. He accosted me and said, thanks, man. I'm like, what? He's like, I listened to the best things pod and you spoiled succession for me. Oh yeah, that's true. Because you you haven't actually watched succession yet. And I was like, you live under a fucking rock? I mean- My wife wife hasn't seen the Sopranos. And every time it comes up, I'm like, I'm so jealous that you could actually go and sit down and watch the Sopranos and not have it be old to you. Of course, it may never happen. But yeah, let's not spoil the Sopranos, I guess. But to your point about uh, Saltburn, I mean, yes, the internet is obsessed with this show, and I get and I get why. I mean, Paul Schrader, the writer of Taxi Driver, called it the worst film of the year. I loved it. I thought it was a sick, savage film, a uh, savage uh, film of toxic elitism. I was thoroughly entertained. I was never bored, Paul. I mean, you can have issues with the overall themes of the well, show. And it's also a complete ripoff of a talented Mr. Ripley, which well, again is very smart. Always steal other movie ideas, Matt. You and I sit around most of the day when we're not on a podcast trying to steal other people's ideas. So I get But it. listen, no, okay, it's a gorgeous, depraved mess, the movie, but it's a beautiful mess. It's the bastard love child of talented Mr. Ripley with yes. the dash of Amber Crombie Fitch models. And uh here's the thing though, what people what I think people miss when they go, I fucking hated it. It's a satire. If you take it completely literally, you miss the point. It's a send up of the elite, the bourgeoisie, the eat the it's an eat the rich satire as coming from a like a blue collar kid, you know, middle class kid. I love that kind of shit. So yes, if Connor Roy and Willa from Succession had a kid, he'd be a character in Saltburn. The last thing I'll say at it is go see it in the theater because satires don't work as well at home. We spend way too much time watching shit on our phones, like match six hours a day. And sometimes you don't get the subtlety and the humor in something. In a movie theater, people are going to be laughing and you're going to have a shared experience of being super fucking cringed out. I was actually just talking to our new, uh, well, we've met our new uh, head of social media and she was saying that she watched Saltburn with her mother. So go watch the theater, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend watching it with your mother. Yeah, I, I did too as well. Watch it with my mother and it was it was pretty funny. Folks, I, it's not in the theaters anymore. So I, I don't know. Oh shit, you have to watch it on Amazon now. Unless you have a friend who's got a, a private screening room. I know you've got a couple of those in your bag. So if you want to set that up for the listeners, uh, you could you could do that. Beat LA movie night. Folks, that was our first episode of 2024. Uh, I just want to once again, thank all the listeners. What we would love is if you go to our Instagram page and be a follower, just go to Beat LA Podcast and you can give us a follow. We'd love it. We'd super appreciate it. We'll follow you back. Paul, you got any shout outs before we sign off here? Go Niners. Don't listen to me. That's all I have to say. And have a great 2024, everyone. We'll see you next week, we hope. Be safe and uh, keep enjoy your damp January. That's right. So until next week, ladies and gentlemen, Paul. Beat LA.